It's an amazing thing to come into the house of the Lord to worship Him during the season of year, isn't it? I would just like to stay frozen in time for about the last 20 minutes. In case you're wondering, YouTube has done that for you. It says homily next to my name. And so today I'd like to just share with you a couple of Christmas stories. Because the birth, the life, the death of Christ is a story about God's love for us. During this season of year, we look at a few themes that lead up to Christmas. This week we're going to look at peace. I love the season of year between Thanksgiving and Christmas, but it gets a little hectic for me because the Christmas season, one part is about shopping. And just the word sends, I go into anticlactic shock. Now, I heard a lot of deep laughs, and I, I sent some of the men um, sympathizing with just that word. But between now and then, we have 13 or 14 days, and you will be busy going about shopping, won't you? Um, in fact, I thought about gifts that I have received in the past, and I couldn't help but just go to a room where one of the gifts that I had received in the past was properly stored, but not used. So I wonder what, what's in here? Kids were probably wondering also. Well, there it is. A brand new tool bag. So new. In fact, it doesn't bear any scars. You see, when I receive new things, I like to just look at them for a while. <laughs> now inside also. From previous years, were their compliments. A tool bag needs something to put into it, doesn't it? These were new once. And these were new just a couple of years ago in our, in case you're wondering, their, their Torquex heads that have only been used a few times. I, I like tools. I like to have a full set I like them when they're brand new, but when they're looking at me brand new in the drawer as I pull them out, I hardly like to use them at all. <laughs> but over time, they get just a little worn, broken in, broken down. See, they come in all different sizes, all different colors, and all different purposes. This is one of my favorite ones because you can hardly break it. It says Craftsman. If you manage to break it, bend it, or destroy it, they give you a new one free. This one has been used for, I don't know, it shows signs of wear in the tip. Apparently at one time I needed an emergency chisel to chisel out some block and chip the handle. It's got paint and all kinds of stuff. Oh, what's that got to do with Christmas anyway? I, I'm not exactly sure. Except to say some of the gifts that we receive we just put off to the side, and we really don't use. And others we use right away. And sometimes we are a little bit like these tools, a little scarred, a little worn. In fact, I, I think if I were this tool, if I hold it close to my ear, I can hear the story of how the pipe wrench, ooh, it hurt as it went on the end to get extra torque. And the pounding of the hammer took its toll as well. We come to this Christmas season 
with our lice in all different, different conditions to share our lice with the Lord as a return gift to Him. But this morning, I want us to center on the gift of peace that God wants to give us during this season of year. Because sometimes in life, we find ourselves in the space of time and in the struggles of life, needing that special sense of peace. So as we go to Christ today, let's bow together for just a moment. Father, during this season of year, we've been blessed already during this worship service. I think I heard the angels listening as the children led us to the throne of grace already. But Father, as we turn our thoughts to you, we come, Father, to present ourselves. Give us that special gift of peace that comes only from you. As we go to your word this morning, I ask in Christ's precious name, amen. amen. So two quick stories that form our homily this morning. A king had a kingdom, and he called his kingdom the kingdom of peace. In his palace, he wanted a painting that illustrated what peace was all about. Throughout the kingdom, the decree went forward, bring your painting to the king's castle, a painting that would create to every person who come to behold it a sense of peace. For six months, the paintings came flowing into the palace. The king set up all of the paintings before him, and he selected two to be placed in the entryway to the palace. And all of the subjects of the kingdom were to come and look at the paintings and cast their ballots between the two paintings. One painting was a painting, a glorious painting of a lakeside setting. The lake was as still as glass, mirroring in its, uh, mirroring in its surface the mountains that were snow-covered, the sunlight, the birds flying overhead, the picturesque setting of the sheep grazing beside it. Have you been there to that place called peace? Where everything seems ever so still, the trees reflecting in the water. Oh, that one might spend an hour, a day, a year, untold time, captured by that which the painting beheld, a place of peace. The other painting that the king had presented for the people to behold was a painting set just adjacent to it. It took a little bit deeper concentration to fully comprehend the significance of that painting. For it was a painting of a mountainside and a waterfall and a jagged cliff and lightning coming out of the sky and dark clouds and dark hues filled the painting. But tucked up off in the shadow, if you looked ever so carefully, there in the cliffs of the rock was just a little small bush. And there, there lodged in that bush a nest with a mother bird hovering over its nest. In this apparent raging storm, there was just a place of peace. So 
So they came, one by one, to cast their ballots for which painting should stay in the castle at the king's request. So if you were casting your ballots, how would you cast them today? Where do you find your life today when it comes to finding the place of peace in a picture? On the duly appointed day, the king called his servants and those of his kingdom forward. And he had looked over the ballots and he said, by king's proclamation, I'm going to share with you the people's vote and I'm going to share with you the king's proclamation. And the, the people's vote by just the way of the beauty of the painting had cast a majority vote for the beside the still waters as a place to find peace. I like that description of peace. Don't you, friends? It's beside still waters that we come in contact with Christ. The king, though, reflecting upon it and fully realizing it's beside still waters that God's spirit is readily apparent, had made proclamation that it would be the other painting of the storm and God's provision that would hang in the palace so that everybody who came to the king's palace could see that the king provides in their greatest hour of need a place of provision, of safety, and his presence. How is it today? Where do you find your place of peace today? I believe we have peace in a world because of Christ's, because of God's gift to us the gift of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, who offered his life as a sacrifice. I believe the gift of peace that comes from Christ gives us, as a people of peace, a purpose to go forward as a community of peace into a world that is filled in turmoil. Do you see them all around you? People who are looking for a sense of peace and purpose in their life. Share with them the Prince of Peace. Share with them that during this time of year, we have peace because we have purpose as we come to Jesus. The gift of peace allows us to have a time of prayer. And in that prayer and presence of Christ, we draw close to him. And he forgives our sins as we come to him and pardons us from our sinfulness. And we have that closeness with him during this season of year. That peace that comes to our heart and into our lives finds its lodging that as we share it with others, they too share in the gift of peace. So as we come into his presence during this Christmas season, I must ask you, what gift will you present to him? Will it be a gift of a present? Excuse me, a gift of a present or a gift of presence? A gift of present with a T or a gift of presence with a C. For you see, we can give gifts. We can give of our means and our possessions one to another and to the Lord. But I believe it's a gift of presence with a C that he would ask of us that we might have 
one with another. For it's by the gift of presence with a C that we share our love with him and our love for one another. One more quick story, because I realize very well stories are remembered better than just facts and texts. This, this story is written and shared by Carol, and it illustrates the difference between the gifts of presence with a T and gifts of presence with a C during this time of year that gives peace to our hearts. Carol said they had just moved from Colorado to California early in their marriage when the kids were very young and grandma and grandpa lived back in Colorado and so she called her mother-in-law and said this is the first year we're in California so I'm calling to let you know that we will not be able to spend Christmas with you like we've always done. We're going to celebrate as a family. Her mother-in-law said, what? With a certain inflection in her voice, as if to suggest, what? How could that ever be? She started to tell her again, Carol said, well, we will be celebrating we will anticipate you being here on Christmas Eve so we can celebrate the family tradition as always. She only got through her second very humble attempt to try to explain in a, a feeble way of how it was they would not be together and she quickly realized in a split second that they would be going to Colorado. Carol said, she had to tell her four children at a family gathering over supper that we would be doing something different. We are not going to, we are going to give a Christmas present in a different way this year. For you see, the plan is we are going to forgo all of our Christmas presents so we can be in grandma and grandpa's presence with a C and the kids looked at themselves and mom asked Carol said how many of you are in favor of going back to see grandma and grandpa all four hands went up the joyous occasion and the thousand mile plus drive was hardly an effort when you're going some place that means peace and being in someone's presence. It was a joyful time they had together, exchanging gifts, the family tradition of a meal, exchanging stories, there were pictures, there was a slideshow, and even some of that Super 8 movies, for some of you that remember those times of Super 8 films. It's been just a generation or two that this story comes forward. Speed forward to several years later, about 30 years into their marriage. The kids were all dispersed, and it was time for Christmas again. One was in Denver, one was in Vail, one was in California, and another was in Oregon, scattered all over the, all over the states. Her husband had lost her job. In fact, they were separated. 32 years of marriage, and they didn't know where they were going to go. Carol's phone rang, and it was the oldest child of the family. And she said, Mom, guess what? We kids have gotten together, and we're going to go forego our Christmas presents for a Christmas, what do you think? Presents. We have rented a lodge in Colorado for a week. And we are not going to have any Christmas presents, but we want to get together as a family again. We have bought you a plane ticket to join us. 
Pack your bag, and we'll look forward to being together with you on Christmas Day. The family gathered together, and you can imagine the awkwardness, a little bit of the awkwardness. Can't you? I can see, how, how in the world is this going to go? Mom and dad separated first year. We can't have this. The kids had, had it all hatched in the plan, maybe if they spent some time together. But, you know, it takes a lot to unravel 30, 32 years of marriage. It takes a lot to unravel all of the pain and all of that kind of stuff. But somehow through that week together, it got unraveled because it is the presence more the pre than the presence that is the most important piece of Christmas in bringing about peace. For you see, something happened during that week. As the family met together, they exchanged uh, pleasantries and remembered and recalled all of the joyous times of past. Mom thought in her mind, how could it be? How did this happen? This discussion between me and Dad, and Dad looked across and thought, 30 years of Christmases together, how can we go forward without that? And indeed, they were reunited during that time of Christmas because of something else that peace brings. It is the peace of forgiveness that Christ brought into their hearts. It is the presence and the pardon that comes to our lives that we can share with one another. The greatest gift that we can have leading up to Christmas Day is the gift of the peace of Christ in our lives. The pardon and forgiveness that we have received by him that will flow forth from our lives as we, by extension, reach out to those whom we have offended or who have offended us and give them the peace of unmerited favor that Christ gives to us, that we might have that Christmas presence in their lives, as we might be united with Christ and them during this season of year. May Christ's peace take us to that place of peace in our lives, Take us to that place of prayer in our lives. Take us that, to that place of pardon and forgiveness. And take us into his presence and into the presence of others. That we as a people might worship Christ and love one another during this season of year. Let us pray together. Father, it's during this season of year that as we worship you, we would ask that we might be your people. That we go frequently to that place that brings us peace. That place beside still waters. That place of assurance that you are abiding watching over us in the storms of life. The place that draws us from moments of discouragement and loneliness into your presence to find the joy of Christ waiting for us to come into his presence. And Father, during this season of year, help us to present not only presence, but presence in other people's lives. That Christ might be glorified, that we, just as he was, might be a people and a person of peace. We ask in his precious name. Amen. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for the gift of your only begotten Son. Father, may the presence, his presence in our hearts, Give us that peace that comes only from you. And may that peace flow out from us. 
We ask through Christ's precious name. Amen.